I don't know about you, but I love music. I grew up playing multiple instruments. My mom is an elementary school music teacher, and we always had some type of music playing in the house. We even had clean the house day music. So to this day, I can't hear the winter movement from Vivaldi's Four Seasons without feeling an urge to dust and vacuum. It's always amazing to me how the right song can lift your spirits, calm you down, help you focus, get you psyched up, or give you courage. Just press play and you have the perfect mix of songs to give you the confidence you need to face whatever you have in front of you. Confidence is something each one of us might need an extra dose of right now. That's why we're taking this whole summer to press play, get in the mix, and discover more about confidence and where it should come from. We define confidence like this, learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Which begs the question, how does God see you? And me, or everyone? First of all, God created each one of us in His image. God values us, God sees us as His children, God loves us, and God sees us as people worth saving and offering a bigger purpose than we could possibly imagine. Nowhere is this more evident than in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Because of what Jesus has done, you can have confidence. And when you put your faith in Jesus, you can truly see yourself how God sees you. As we discover more about the way God sees us, we'll memorize Psalm 27, 13. I remain confident of this, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This summer, we want our kids to press play and get in the mix, out on the dance floor, the ball field, even in their own neighborhood, and discover that their confidence in God and their faith in Jesus can give them the courage to make a difference in this world. With that in mind, we kick off the summer with an important question. Why does Jesus matter? We can build our confidence on many things, friends, family, or ourselves and our abilities, but eventually those things crumble. In John 3.16, we read about the foundation that will never fail, Jesus. Through Jesus, God went to the ends of the earth to show us how much He loves us. So, bottom line, you can be confident because God loves you. For the rest of June, we head back to the Old Testament and discover how some heroes of the faith found their confidence in God, starting with Joshua. After Moses died, God chose Joshua to lead the Israelites. Joshua hit the ground running. His job was to lead people into the land God promised them. But there were some obstacles in the way, including a giant walled city called Jericho. Now, if you're planning on capturing a city, walking around it for seven days probably isn't the first thing that comes to mind. God had a plan that might have seemed unconventional, but it was a plan that showed Joshua that God can be trusted no matter what. And we can have confidence because, bottom line, God's plan is the best plan. For week three, we meet Gideon, the unlikely hero. When God called Gideon to lead the Israelites, Gideon doubted that God would really want him to help. Gideon was from the smallest tribe, the smallest family, and he was the smallest of them. God wanted him anyway, and eventually Gideon learned that nothing is impossible when God is on your side. Bottom line, God can use you no matter what. We finish out the month with an epic story about confidence when we see how, with God's help, Elijah faced down the prophets of Baal. Elijah had confidence that God would send fire from heaven and consume a water-drenched altar to prove that he was the all-powerful God of the universe. Bottom line, God can do the impossible. When it comes to learning about confidence and how God sees us, we are just getting started. We can't wait to see what happens this whole summer as kids across the world hear how God's word can impact how they can get in the mix and make a difference in the people around them. Now, back to this album. See you next time.